Greetings, everybody. My name is The Rental Man Buck. Before we start today's episode, I wanted to share with you guys kind of an overview as to what we have going on today, revolving around the Nebraska Farm Series. With a full calendar year now come and gone since our first launch trailer, to today's modern day setup, we've had a lot of great projects, some of which have defied the game physics themselves, while others are the harsh reminder of that sometimes life just isn't fair. With so much content to unpack, let's dive right into the full calendar year experience of the Nebraska Farming Series on Green Valley, Nebraska. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this featured presentation. Top of the morning to you, ladies. My name's E. Rentalman Buck. If this farm looks very familiar, you are right. We have officially brought back the Nebraska Farm Series. This uh, farm has been built probably in total eight completely separate times, but this one, I believe, has done the most justice and has the most potential out of every single build I've ever done. I am super excited for this series as I got a lot planned and in store for ideas, but what we need to do today to start off of it is I need to get Get some plowing done and if I got some time I'm gonna run to the co-op and pick up a uh, load of anhydrous and use the 8345R right behind this in the shed but I was already out ripping yesterday on field 15 over here right on the just basically the fields that surround my house the map we're currently on is Green Valley, Nebraska. I'm actually very happy that I chose to do this once again on the Nebraska map you kind of got to do this with tradition so I would like to get my GPS fired up with the auto width on this field. I have yet to actually figure this out. In order to get that GPS lined up, I'm actually going to just do a quick pass here on the outside. Uh, so for those of you that are really not familiar with the Nebraska Farm Series, it is basically an IRL-based farm off of my uncle's farm down in southern Nebraska, right bordering about 20 minutes from the Kansas County, the Kansas State line. Now, I don't know exactly how many acres he farmed, but one thing that I do know is that the farm that I have created, which you guys can see an aerial view of both those right there, is based off of that exact farm. And a majority of the equipment that you guys see on this farm is not exact, but it's what I can, I can remember to the best of my abilities that was on his farm. So for right now, we are going to take this and GPS set up. Boop. Drop the plow. And let's make our way. Once we started, I kind of forgot to reset my money, so that's been fixed now. But old Daryl ended up, when he got to the farm, he took out the mule from the garage. So that's what we ended up getting. We have a nice little Kawasaki mule we just kind of run around the farm with. So like I mentioned, this is the other tractor that I got, the 8345R, that does have the GPS on it, Starfire 6000. Even though the 9430 is currently preoccupied with the cultivator this thing can pull the anhydrous toolbar that I got. 
I took that ditch completely wrong. My grandpa would have had in the coronary seeing me do that. I just finished the valve connections for the tank to the toolbar. We will get the toolbar unfolded here, get the hydraulics, but while that is doing that, the soil information that we have, it did not change it with the unit convert to pounds per acre. It's still kilograms, but basically what it's at right now is a handful of this field is at zero, and then the other portion is at 20. Since we are pretty much down and ready to go, I'm uh, going to fire up the toolbar. Let's just kind of get an idea of where we are at on these. That little pass, let's check and see what that does. Okay, so we actually can put it right at 160. Sweet! Alright, so let's, uh, let's get cooking, because this thing's got a lot of ground to cover. wonder how Daryl's doing over there. I think I might be able to see his cab. Oh, I can kind of see his top half. But let's check our levels on what we're doing. Ooh, ooh all right. This field's doing nice now. I know I'm not going to touch these ones since some of these are actually uh, soybeans. But the ones that are corn, I'm going to put anhydrous on those after I'm done with this season. For the meantime, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pop over there to Daryl. And we're going to see what he's at. And I might just swap him places. Daryl wasn't using the GPS, so I ended up having to kick that back on, so I'm a little bit off on my pass. Uh, we're going to finish up the rest of this field by doing like these little strips that I did not do because the GPS wasn't in line. I actually really like the sounds. It, it, this is cool. I'm really liking using this GPS. It's very convenient. It's very handy, but I also can just... Now it's like all I have to do is just move my mouse. And I can pan. But like I said, Daryl right now, he is currently over yonder so let's hope he doesn't get that one as far off as he did this one now see this is more logical we're going across the rows this this is the way this would ride if we were going across the rows at 25 miles an hour good lord this thing would just be shaking i can hear the freaking metal clanking from here so like i mentioned in the beginning of the video guys we got about 500 acres worth of land that we got to get ready to go here whether it's either prepping it for next season or like next video we got to get it the crop out for the season, and I'll have to get that grain system going on my farm, which I'm so proud of how that thing actually works, but what that comes down to is my two fields that I'm going to be watching this year for their productivity are primarily the 22 and 24, for reasons of this. 22 needs plowed, but also According to the precision farming, it needs anhydrous. What I'm hoping I can do on that is I really want to see the turnaround crop. I think this is corn right now as is. So I'm going to do that one as corn on corn just for the fact that I want to see the yield difference on what that field is projected to pull. But we will have to figure that one out on another day because different, different animal, different beast. This thing should be good done. We don't need this anymore. We can put this back in the shed. At least for the time being. I think this is going to be hooked up to... Oh, what am I going to have this thing on? I think the next step for this guy is to put him on the disc arrow, which I might get that set up right now. Uh, because Daryl's going to be going back and forth over there. I'll bring my pickup out here uh, so I can go and refill in that tank because that's going to be only five grand. As promised, we said we would do an equipment tour. Now, we also still have a lot to do today, so to make a long story short, I was uh, very, I was very, very, very intelligent, and uh, the truck that I used to plow snow with, yeah, I didn't put the plow on it yet. We're going to try and get this stuff cleared out without, uh, without driving ourselves nuts, so we'll see you guys in just a second. So even though it was inside a heated garage, I am going to let that sit for a little bit and warm up. But kind of going through the main machine shed, we have a 2008 F450 flatbed that's just kind of used to haul seed. Uh, get this it's an errand truck, basically. Got our Outback camper. We've got a 3665 Blue Drive Kinsey planter. This is a 16 row planter. We also have a 48 row planter DB120. The Kinsey is our headlands planter, while the DB120 knocks out the main insides of the fields. We have a Kawasaki SX Mule. We have a Kubota Track Skid Loader. That is really, really nice. I have some projects coming up uh, later in the springtime for that. Since we don't really have much going on right now. We have a John Deere 4940 self-propelled sprayer. 
along with two Brent, I was just, I'm pretty much just gonna say 1300 bushel grain carts. We have an S680 from 2012, as well as a Deer N542C seed drill. And then buried behind the two carts is our Western straight blade plow. So you can really see how intelligent I was when I packed this stuff in here. Yeah, not my smartest move to say the least. And last but not least, one of the main workhorses, but not necessarily our huge workhorse, our 8345R. This both, both this tractor and as you guys saw in the last episode, my 9430, those both have Starfire GPS. Now coming around to the backside, uh, we do have a handful of implements, one, some of which I might end up selling off. I haven't decided yet. Uh, we have a battery charger currently on the C70 since this thing has a massive draw. I know it says Ford down there, but of course it's the Chevy C70. This is our grain truck. We we're hauling back and forth some dry corn, which we have, according to the production chain, we got a lot of dry corn that we need to move, 2,700 bushel worth. Uh, but this is kind of my taxi truck that goes back and forth, so we're going to leave him on the battery charger since we're kind of trying to get him started. Uh, this is actually new addition to the farm. I picked this up a couple weeks ago on a government auction. This is a, a old Phoenix dump truck. I'm going to use this as a gravel layer for when I have to do a project later this spring. Uh, that's 2410 field cultivators. This is a 2730 ripper and then we have our blue jet at3000 fertilizer applicator which i don't really know how much of this thing i'll actually use i highly doubt i'm going to use it very much i might end up selling it but then here is the absolute bull of the farm r9430 not the oldest tractor in on the farm but definitely not one of the newest it's currently hooked up to my five section 2630 disc then there's this pj tilt deck that i also ended up picking up which i i really like this trailer I don't know how much I'm going to have it used for since it's older. It's uh, I've since kind of replaced it with my load trail, but uh, we still use that trailer from time to time. Then we have a Wilson Pace Setter attached to a, our Western Star Lomax. We also have a Kenworth T600 with a Jet Hopper trailer. So that's kind of a, a really nice looking setup on that one. We're going to our Quonset. We have the Thunder Creek Fuel Trailer, which also does hold depth. Uh, the only reason that it looks like it's sinking into the ground is that it is like full on fuel. We do have our cartridge pressure washer, haven't done anything with that, we winterized that. An 8430 and 8100, I thought that was an 8110, but it's not, it's an old 8100, as well as a 9660 STS. That is our other combine if we do end up running two combines in the field at once. Uh, we got a Westfield auger going up to our bin site setup, which that's just an entire system and video on its own. We have a backco drive over deck here, which we're probably going to need to move. A open cab 4030, which is just basically a dedicated auger tractor. It does not do anything but this job. We have a Komatsu PC300 excavator. Uh, the rest of it is all just bins, sheds, and a house. My pickup, as you guys know, is the 2018 F150. I ended up selling off my 2013 Silverado just for the sake of some fun savings. But we need to get that plow out from back behind all of this stuff, and that's going to require a lot of moving. We'll catch you guys once we get a little bit further ahead of this. So I ended up having to grab the 8430, which was not happy about starting. Uh, but all we have to do is move out this Brent Avalanche, and we can start plowing some snow. So I'm just going to kind of clear a path out of here so I can kind of start backing equipment back in probably get the 94 just backed up first since it'll be the easiest to maneuver yeah I think I'm just gonna leave the plow blade on the front of that f-350 for a little bit just in case decides it wants to snow again but we'll turn that off just to save some diesels I really don't need to be going through any more fuel right now I guess without further ado we will start clearing out all of the snow from our driveways
that's all about all there is to it. Now, I don't plan on getting anything, uh, I don't plan on needing the TLX at all or the low boy here anytime soon. So, what I'm technically, eh, what I'm technically going to do now is I'm going to get the skid steer for the Kubota out. I'm going to clear out this whole little area so I can get the 4030 out of there since I do have to run to uh, town and go get the propane. Uh, but that basically also means I'm going to need to clear out a road to get there since uh, the county roads are not going to be cleared. So, uh, let's get the Kubota part done first and then we will get to the propane. Okay, so now that we got this cleared out, I'm going to hopefully be able to get the 4030 out of here. It's going to be kind of cold, and hopefully she'll start. Like a champ. Didn't even think twice. I just wish it actually drove as easy. See, this is why I hate this thing. I wish it drove as good as it started. Let's kind of give this thing the beans. Careful. And we will make our way over as uh, I don't think roads are going to be terrible, terrible, but I do know this is definitely going to be snow packed, so we're going to have to watch out. Yeah, see, it's just as I thought it was going to be. It's just going to be completely snow packed. To save possibly, you know, wrecking into the ditch, we'll catch you guys once we actually get there and we're starting to load with propane since this, is, this could get possibly pretty slick. And this is why I love Tractor Spot. Look at this. Main road still covered. But all of there, even in the crevices and back on the back side of these things, they are still one step ahead of the game. I uh, will buy the rest of the leaders to fill the thing back up. It's $226. Not the worst, not the best, but definitely not the one with the hairy chest. So we will make our way back with 3,300 gallons worth of propane. And we will see you all in just a minute. Now, luckily for me, I can actually still see my tire tracks from when I was going here the first time, but I'm not going to be pressing my luck, so we'll see you guys back at the farm. So we made it back, and we got about, out of the 3,000, we had 2,000 go in, so this trailer still has about 1,000 gallons left of propane. Uh, that dryer is now still going to be running, but now what I need to do is I need to get this stuff started to get transferred over. So we'll fire up our PTO trailer and get in our auger. And uh, we're going to start unloading the dry corn. We'll also have to grab our backhoe auger from the opposite side of that snow bank. So I might have to dig it out with the Kubota. But we're basically going to stick our other backhoe auger right here underneath that pipe. And start unloading it into the C70 up on top of the hill. Alright, come on. Terminals seem tight. Let's see if you'll give. Or if you're going to be a pain in the neck. Let's give her a few pumps of the gas. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, she did not like that. That is a certain. We'll shut that. And we'll kind of let it warm up here for just a second. Let's get this thing out of here so we can start transferring some grain. Now how this works is I will go underneath this auger which is directly connected to the main system bin. I then will fill up this truck with the dry corn, which is coming from the corn dryer, and then I can dump this into that bin over there, which these three bins are equivalent to 3.3 million liters of corn. I only have, I think, like 192,000 from my two fields that I harvested this year, so definitely not gonna be, you know, filling the bins. But it definitely is going to help because if I can have dried corn to go and sell, I'm going to make a lot more money and be able to do a lot more uh, things come spring. Then we back up to the west field. We start dumping in the bin. It's as simple as that. And as we can see, as the corn is drying, that is taking away our 
uh, propane, so we're getting dried corn out of there. As of every 500 corn, 24 propane, we get 500 dried corn. So we're going to take this truckload into town. We'll see you guys in just a second. Now, conveniently, my cell point right next to the tractor supplies, but let's just see how much this actually gets us. $7,100. Yeah. That's for the 300 bushel, and I can carry a thousand. So we're looking at about almost probably $20,000 per trailer I can carry in. Yeah, I'm going to get home before things kind of get nasty. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. I didn't actually know that it was going to be snowing this much in this save. So definitely going to be planning for some more spring projects here. Going to pay off some of that loan. I'll wait for the corn to get to unrealistically $27 for the dry corn per bushel. And uh, basically, we're going to hopefully be able to strike it rich and be able to do a couple new projects in the spring. So top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Uriel Man Buck, welcome back to the Nebraska Farm Series, where currently right now I'm going over my analytics for pricing on dry corn as well as soybeans. I'm really kind of on edge right now trying to get a lot of this stuff done as I got a huge project that I need about $370,000 worth of money to do. And uh, as you guys can see in the corner, we only have $65,000. Uh, we have about 7,500 bushels worth of dry corn that we need to sell as well as 4,000 bushels worth of soybeans beans that we can sell after doing all the math as you guys can see here i mean i've been going to town on a lot of this stuff the amount that i need to do this project is roughly going to be about three hundred thousand dollars if i sell everything right now as is i'm looking at about 250 to 265 thousand dollars worth of money after i saw the price increase a little bit the fair oaks farm just down the road they're having a sale on this chunk of land which is about a 21 acre field about a 21 acre plot of land but i'd say only about 15 acres of that is worth actually doing anything to and what i wanted to do is i'm going to be getting a lot of grant money for this getting a answer slash test plot to put down there. So the big part of the money is $165,000 worth of land, but I also need to get a irrigation system installed in there. I need to get in contact with seed companies because I know Pioneer is saying that they want to put their crops in that field for our farmers around the area. But the irrigation system, everything else under the sun, we need to get at least $200,000 before the bank will even remotely loan us the other hundred. Without further ado, we're going to get trucking because that's exactly what we need to be doing right now. So if you guys have not already, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe down below. As you guys do know, we are currently on the race to 100,000 subscribers. And thank you all. As just a few days ago, we ended up pa passing the 50,000 subscriber benchmark. This is technically a 50,000 subscriber special. Bambi just ran underneath the tree. We'll have about three and a half truckloads of this, give or take, that we'll need to be taking in. This should bring us, if I did my mouth correctly, this should be about $100,000 worth of soybeans at the current pricing that we have it at. Put the cover on top, and we'll see you guys at the uh, at the elevator. So just now rolling up, we uh, already weighed in. We'll hopefully be able to get our check here relatively soon, but we'll drop the front gate. The one nice thing about today is actually that we had a very big warm spell hit, and uh, it's supposed to be a high of, I believe, 93 today. So yeah, currently right now it is 84 degrees out and it's supposed to basically just stay sunny, rain this afternoon so it'll drop down. That might mean that we're going to get a really big thunderstorm in the afternoons. I'm glad that I waited till the 2nd of February because that's when I originally did my math was on the 1st. I would have really been doing a lot better off if I'd have sold a majority of this corn in December, but luck just did not go our way. So we're going to head down to the bank after this and get all of our loans secured so we can have all of our land bought. We can get everything else taken care of. And basically the next time you will see me is we'll be out at the test plot, getting some stuff ready to go for our upcoming projects. I'll sign here, 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 and here, and hopefully we can keep doing more business. We're gonna get talking with the NRDC on that and we shall talk to you later, Alan. Thank you, sir. So that's our buddy, Alan. He's our loan, uh, he's our loan officer for getting these big financial increases on our account, but now we have the extra $100,000 sitting around. But I gotta get on the phone with the NRDC so that way I can make sure, if anyone that doesn't know what that stands for, it stands for Natural Resource Defense Council. Basically they help control all the resources for like water and all that. And the fact that I'm gonna be doing like half and half of a pivot versus the drip irrigation, 
they are kind of not they don't like the they don't like the fact that I'm doing the pivot one but they don't mind the fact that I'm doing this drip irrigation styles so just got off with Krista the representative for NRDC we ended up getting our money transferred to us so now we have a grand total of four hundred seventy seven thousand dollars to work with we did end up signing the papers with the Fair Oaks family here uh, so this property will now be ours. Like I said, this is about 20 acres, 21 acres worth of land. Give or take the fact that I actually have only about 15 worth of arable ground, but we're not going to need that much just for the fact that it's going to be strip crops. We're going to have like a big square section of a couple different hybrids. So the big thing is we're just going to have to wait for them to take our money out for this piece of land. And there it goes. $168,000 for this chunk of land. Now what I actually want to do is I want to show you guys kind of what the plan is for this as we have to haul in a ton of gravel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna need to bring down the Kubota, a chainsaw, and a couple of tree clearing things, so I might have to bring down the excavator as well. But we're gonna need to haul in a ton of gravel to make a graveled pathway that goes all the way down this stretch of road. This is gonna be the straighter of the two tree lines, so I'm gonna take out, I'd say, two to three rows back of these trees. We'll probably take it out until we get to about here and this will be the end of our pivot irrigation and then over the top of this hill is going to be where our drip system is going to go we're going to install the pump at the top of the hill so that way once it's pumping water all that river irrigation is going to be going down this hillside but as of right now, what we really need to do is we need to get back to the farm, get the dump truck, head down to Hay Springs, and get our dump truck full of gravel so we can start laying a line of gravel out here. It's going to be an absolute chaos. So we'll get you guys once we kind of get a little bit more of a ducks in a row, and you guys will kind of get what we're talking about. I hope you guys have a little bit of fun with this one. If you guys really do enjoy some of this stuff, this is about to get lumbery. City life and the crazy nights. Figure I should probably give it a try. Baby, check it out, see what it's all about. But the traffic was fast and the money was slow. The people I met you never get to know. I kind of miss this place I used to live back home. Cause up here it's break. So basically what we're doing right now is this entire pile of trees, once I get this thing pushed, I'm gonna push this, kinda get out of this for a second. So that is our cutoff line so we know when to stop. But everything else beforehand, we'll actually kinda make a mark back here on probably this guy. So that way we know how far back we're gonna go because the thing is I wanna get as straight of a line as possible. There are our X's, our burn pile will go right there on that tree, and we know our cutoff line is on that tree and that tree back there. Everything that we got in here is going to be cuts, and this should be good.
So I'm just finishing up on the last stump over here, at least that I know of. And I gotta get the Komatsu to push that one last pile of branches over. This took a lot longer than I thought, and I think I still might have to cut a few trees up on the north side of this. Just so I can make sure I have clearance. The, the thing about these pivots is that they take up a lot and lot and lot of space. So I'm gonna have to make sure that I have everything I need for this. But here is the burn pit pile just by our tree. I did end up taking out the one tree that had our X on it, and I went just that far over to the burn pile tree line. That's going to be fun to watch go up in flames. So everything in there can basically just be burned. This is all either dead wood or trees that were just getting in the way of what the crops are going to be. So now that we have this massive area uh, mapped out where we can actually place our irrigation system, we're going to get on the phone with Lindsay, and we're going to make sure we can get that thing out here, and it'll probably be about a week or so, and then we can... Uh, Kind of get our stuff ready to go. Three weeks later. So it's been a few days and we finally got our irrigation pivot installed as a two section pivot. I'm bringing the 8100 down right now. Then we're going to bring down the 9430 with the ripper because we're going to be getting ready to start making our strips for the crops. And we're kind of going to start somewhere over in this little bit of an area. I kind of have a map which you guys can see right there that's kind of what we're going to shoot for is that's the one that's right next to me but that will be the layout that we're going to be shooting for now you guys can see in the bottom right it says umbilical hose i actually have the pumps and hoses pack now yes i know this is not what this is actually for but what i'm going to do is when i actually install these irrigation hoses I'm going to claim that they are the drip style of irrigation hose since it is a black plastic hose that has technically holes in it. So we just fill it with water and that will run down by gravity fed. As you guys can tell, we did get the burn pile completely burnt down. This is where that was. Kind of got a little bit of uh, silt that's in the ground. So we'll be able to disc all this up hopefully and kind of clear it out. So we're going to run back and get the 9430 bout. And then I'm going to use uh, GPS whatnot. And we're going to get all this field stuff tilled up, ready to go. So the way these rows are working is that it runs with the irrigation system. Now that system that they have out there is a three pivot system. And this does not have a sprinkler at the end. So as you guys can see by the left side screen, I'm going to kind of have to try and almost guess how far out I can go with this. Roughly about that far to the back half of our rollers. Go again. Again, about 12 rows. Raise it up. Go forward. Drop the back. Go again. And we'll do one more. Let's get this line back up. We will drop the plow and go. So our 10 test plots are done. I ended up having to rent a, a little offset disc for the 8100 as right up along here on this hillside crest. It's just a little too steep for that plow for some reason for the game to recognize it to hit the ground. So I had to come in here and fix that. We can actually go in here and we can turn on the pump and boom, now all of those are going. Turn it off, our sensors, our valves are closed. 
Well, what it comes down to is we have three main lines. We have our first primary line that comes out and around down to here, and it comes down and irrigates this side portion just itself since it's kind of off to the side. And then we have two water lines that together will help water the rest of these three as all three of these lines right here are all connected but as of right now we we have a little bit of leftover pipe but i'd like to just get some money back by selling that we did also end up getting our answer plot test site sign so this will uh kind of also signify that this is the test plot for all of the area like i said i'm gonna be making quite a few contracts with a couple of the neighbors so they can come out here and test their stuff i will be getting a cut of their revenue that they make from the crop that year I really did enjoy making this one. I really hope you guys did enjoy this as I will be at the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm really diving into uh, figuring out how the, all this stuff actually works or at least down to a point where I can somewhat make it sound somewhat reasonable. Welcome back to the Nebraska Farm Series where today we have a very special episode. We have over 13,000 feet of drain tile that we got installed on our little plot 24 that I've been really talking about all this time. It's got really tight clay soil and we're right next to the riverbed here. So we have a prime opportunity to get some drainage work done on this field. But on to today's project, we have a very special, not joining us guest, but we have a very familiar setup. If you guys have seen Grant's real life channel that when we were down doing the drain tile episode we'll kind of get to what those two co those two cones mean here in just a second but then van rockle of van rockle farms coming out here to help us do a custom tiling project his quad track not exactly because we do not have the 535 quad track nor do i have his tandem axle soil max blade but we do have a 540 quad track as well as the a single axle variant of the soil max tile plow currently sitting back at our main shed so we had that all trucked down here with the tlx last uh last friday which it is currently sunday and there is our irrigation system and the test plot which we do we're going to really be getting into some of those in the coming weeks here during planting season i would be using my 9430 but i have to actually have that thing prepped for planting so i can't be using that right now to do this project otherwise i would Ben did bring out his 6430 with the tile cart, so we're going to be using that. Currently, right now, it is hooked up to my F450, as I'm going to have to shuttle all of the tile reels from my farm because I'm having them delivered to my place, not the field. It was just easier to have the trucker, uh, the trucker show up to my place, and I can just carry them down uh, via the shuttle. Our shuttle actually sitting right there behind the Mauer grain trailer. This is Ben's tile truck, not. Uh, it's a little smaller of a version, but we got a 50G mini excavator to help dig all of our outlets. So for right now, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to park this up here and we're going to go in the shed. We're going to get a look at what we got going on for our setup. Now, if this TikTok shot does not ring a bell, that is because this is pretty much Ben's exact setup, uh, minus the fact that this is obviously a lot newer of a quad track, but also his is a dual axle style of tile blade. I actually had the I had the setup that I could make the dual axles, just the way I had to code this thing, because I built this model from scratch. This is like one of my only, that and the tile cart down there. This is like one of my only two projects that I've actually built from hand. So this is going to be interesting to see how well this episode actually goes. But Ben already has all of his monitors set up in there. He has his field view, which you guys can see from that PNG shot right there. That is our map out of how we're going to be doing the drain system on this. Now, Ben's uh, GPS is still broken in the tractor, so we're going to have to do this all by hand. We do still have the 6430 right there, which if you guys didn't know, I'm just going to take a quick little snippet. of This is going to be a lot of like different real life shots and fake shots. This was my rig that I drove the entire week while I was down there. I've driven this exact tractor, maybe not maybe looks the exact same but it's as close as i'm gonna be able to get to that little thing i was having a blast while doing that over here attached to the f450 the 64 here is our tile cart now i do not have the uh this will be the cable reel that we used when we did our irrigation system uh but this is our tile cart and i actually have a lot of the stuff planned out where you can drop the gate because as ben stated don't mess up my uh don't mess up the table it was a few different words said but then we also have up on top we can put the top on top of there and then of course the trailer tilts back as you guys saw my tiktok of backing up the trailers i was having a ball with this thing pulling it with spencer's truck so our tile reels have arrived now like i said we ordered six of these things and there's only four on this trailer which 
We have two of them being the eight inch pipe and the other two being four inch. Driver's gonna head back and get the other uh, rolls of four inch or I might just go pick them up myself with the load trail trailer, saving some delivery. We will load our axles up to the front. We're gonna put the truck in reverse and all we have to do is just put it in reverse for a slight bit and they should just roll off. I think the back one's just gonna kind of start. There we go. A little bit of encouragement. So we got one reel of tile left to haul down to the field that's not already been loaded up on the trailer, which is the ones that are still on the Ford. What we're going to do is we're going to cap off the top of the trailer since the one that we did not grab is our last piece of 8-inch reel. But I got to the point on this thing when I was in real life to the point where I wouldn't even necessarily need the truck. Uh, whatever it was, I, I just tried to guess how close I could be when I backed up first. I, I, I love doing this. This was like just trailer backers dream and I killed the truck. Nice. But you really have to be careful with how you load this thing. Like there we go. That's straight on the pipe. I don't think we're going to roll it into the back of the door. So let's lift it up just a hair. Scoot forward. And then that should technically come slamming down to the top once we get it far enough down the pipe. There we go. So we're going to set this back down. We'll roll our cage, which right here at the front of this, what we'll have to do is we cap it off. Now, you can't see it right now, but once we have this thing fall back on the ground, that top will be completely encasing the top half of this reel. Slams the bottom. Boom. There it is. There's our top. What we'll do now is we're going to unload our mini excavator, and we're going to start working our way by digging our starting outlet, which is the big one to our 8-inch main. This part was mainly done by Spencer and periodically Ben, give or take what time it was in the day, because Ben usually did this stuff in the morning since he got to the field earlier, but then Spencer usually did the rest of this for the... Uh, rest of the work of this throughout the day. So the goal of doing this is we want to make a grade about 10 feet back so when the water coming from the field is rushing down the pipe that is a very gradual grade so it's not steep enough of a grade that the water comes rushing out and in essence will break and crack the pipe but it's not shallow enough that the water just basically sits inside the pipe and then you just installed all that tile drain for nothing. We're going to see you guys here in just a minute once we kind of get all of that dug out. So I believe this will be our starting grade. Our pile up is not too, too bad. We kind of like evenly dispersed it over the side of the bank, but our outlet's gonna be coming right here. We're gonna have an animal guard go inside the eight inch pipe. Then I will gradually work my way, uh, make a very hard left turn, maybe not just a kind of a gradual left turn, but then we're gonna go all the way down the stretch of this entire bank line. That should be good enough now to where we can start uh, laying our first round of eight inch tiles. Make sure that we have everything in line, and we'll pretty much drive as straight of a line as we can. And this will be our survey to run, know what we're doing with the thing. So we'll scratch our line with the blade. We lower it down just enough to get a scratch on the ground. We are now laying our pipe, and it is reeling up as we go. This line should be pretty straightforward. Said it is being hand fed in. As we go, it just pulls the pipe in and we go all the way down the stretch. Now I know that's not the straightest line on planet Earth and I do apologize for that, but it is super hard to actually keep the wheel straight in this. Uh, that is the end of our first run. So we'll lift up the plow out of the ground and we'll make our way back to start the laterals. The amount of outlets that I thought I actually was going to need were significantly more. I needed 22 outlets to go 50 foot spacings up this entire thing. I'm going to make do with what I have, and we're going to run this survey uh, pretty much back to where that's going to be our markings. The second thing, as you guys notice, the cable reels are gone. Well, there's a reason for that. Uh, I ended up figuring out that that tractor cannot handle the weight of the trailer uh, when it actually has that spool on the back like that spool itself would be fine because it's sitting over the top But it just has too much weight hanging off the back and it just didn't want to work We've already strung out the line for this reel. Uh, we're gonna get it on to the next one, but we can't we gotta make sure we don't drive into that trench and We're good Let's Lay down a line Just picture what we were doing on that very first 8 inch main and we're doing it on this just picture that and there is the end of our first run. Yeah, going up, it does just fine. We don't have any problems with it going up. It's coming back down that's the problem. And we will survey our way back, which in essence, we're just gonna follow our tire tracks. 
now that we're back to what my job was, I can tell you guys a little bit about what we got. By the looks of it, we got about half the, uh, at least a little over half the spool left. We'll pull our line back. Yink, yink, yink. This is the part where Grant got, like, yanked. Like, oh! Hey! Fuck! Like, completely out of the Bolivian. It's hilarious. We'll have Corey sit on the pipe back there. Put it in gear. And let's string. We just got to stay about four to five rows to the right of this, right to the left of this. Do not get any closer to those tire tracks than that. We're going to run back, get the rest of this stretched out, and then we'll replace our spool, and we'll get laying more tires. Man, I always had stories about the city line and the crazy nights. I figure I should probably give it a try. Baby, check it out, see what it's all about. But the traffic was fast and the money was slow. The people I met you never get to know. I kind of miss this place I used to live back home. Cause up here it's pregnant. Paycheck, bread raises, what's next? I'm tired of feeling like a small fish in a big pond. I think I'll go back where I came from Where everybody knows my name My friends are still the same I guess the slow life is just right Like a bonfire on a cold night Hell, and you can keep your nine to five After with the simple life Yeah, I ain't here to try to change your mind Trying to save your time In case you're thinking about Breaking out the bucket list Girl, you can skip this Funny business Cause up there it's complicated And overrated Down here everything is understated That's alright by me I got everything that I need But there is pregnant Paycheck After that, that one is going to start our uh, little S-curve patterns. We'll get the rest of that. There we go. Our survey is done. Turn this bad boy around. What I'm very, very happy about is that we have not had one iota problem of slippage yet. I have not had to call down my 8100 or my 9430 because this tractor is slipping around. I'll give Case the benefit of the doubt. It's got some really good tracks on it. Well, let's just get in line for our... I believe this is the 17th one, our 17th line, if not our 18th. Very short pull here. So we'll get the plow down. Okay. And now this has already been connected. We had to pull this back, but we got to string this out. This is the one thing that really sucked, because by the time that Ben actually would get going, I'd just be, like, getting out of the tractor. So on a run like this, I mean, it was, I was literally running. And what I really need to save up those last two spools for is this crazy stuff that we're about to get into, but also that really long pull around the outside. I'm not going to be surprised if I run out after that. So the first of our long runs is going to start about right here, and it's going to wrap down and around this long side. So it's going to kind of curve, so I have to make sure I follow, because I have to follow these tire tracks with the... 64 as well as the case once we get the survey in. This is going to kind of like get a little close to this. That's going to be fun to dissect which tracks I'm supposed to follow. So this is really, really cool that I'm actually able to like slightly reenact something that people do in real life. In fact, it's something that I've actually now done in real life. Like I said, a big thing of these comes down to just having the experience of saying that you've done it. I've done enough things now in my life where I can just I mean, I've literally done so much, and I'm only 20. We aced that length perfectly. 
We'll start surveying this next run. Wrap around the inside. That should be all the tail tails. This one's gonna be kind of funky because of the fact that we only have two left. It'll kind of make almost an S. It was either this one was an S or the other one was an S, so I kind of just bit the bullet and I'm gonna make this one the S. This is gonna be a very, very, very weird looking survey. I'm gonna kind of stay a little bit further on the outside for the turn, so that way we kind of have enough slack that once the, uh, the the wheel pulls in the pipe, it technically can compensate for it. Don't even have to cut anything. Just cap it off. Right there. And let's go and grab our next spool while we also pull that line, which uh, we'll just go and grab our spool first here before we do that because of the fact we have to do last line and then that spool plus the other spool is gonna have to make us all the way over to here that's gonna be a long pull and there is our really weird looking s curve get our line feed it through to the boot and we're almost done we are almost done this is a lot of passes. This actually took a lot longer than I thought it would, which it's it's logical. This is how long this thing takes. I got to give a big thanks to Ben for bringing his quad track out here for this project. Couldn't have really done it without him. Well, I technically could have with my 94, but it's always fun to have farmers help farmers. To the real life Ben, I really got to thank him for uh, allowing me to kind of do this. Uh, as I just messaged him a couple earlier, I'm like, hey, I got the project that I'm working on. It's all pretty much done. Would you care if I actually used you as the example for the video? And he was he was all really cool with that. He's like, yeah, send it to me once it's done. And we'll see what we can see what we can look at like and see how well we can actually interpret this in farm sim. We got the blade in the ground. Let's pull this one last reel of tile. So this is going to be the number one, which is why we're kind of like connect we're double connecting it into the main connector that goes all the way down to the Niobrara. So that one's going to have the most amount of water, so we're putting it at the end of the pipe, so if anything were too much pressure on it, it's at the very end where it might actually break or crack or something, rather than connecting into uh, one of these lines, and then it has almost double the pressure. So we just got one really long pass to go. And this is, ooh, this is getting into some thick stuff because of the fact we got the tree roots that are over there. We'll throttle up here, and we're just kind of... Give her the beans and hope for the best. So there is our tile pattern. We had 24 total, well, 23, I believe, total pulls, of which the first one here, we kind of got a little bit close at the edge, but uh, we ran a little bit long. That's all right. Uh, but we have all of our main lines going down the stretch of the field, which this is all uh, pretty much just straight flat. I don't necessarily know how to physically describe this uh, without sounding like a ding-dong. So in essence, water drains this way, and then it goes that way and exits there right below the bridge. If there's ever any uh, water over the bridge, don't blame me, okay? It's not coming from this field, I swear. Welcome back. As you guys do know, we haven't gotten to planting yet. I have done a little bit of planting, but not much. The biggest part that I have changed, as you guys probably do know, is I had that 3665 Blue Drive planner. Well, I sold that Kinsey and I got in favor of a 3600 because even though they're both 16 rows, I did opt for a center fill system on this one instead of just the regular boxes, even though the regular boxes wouldn't have killed me to load six ba 16 bags. This one, however, had one thing that the other planner did not, and that is row cleaners. Both the DB120 and the 3600 are pretty much set up. The only thing I might have to do is check the closing wheels on all these since I don't necessarily know if I set those right. But everything else is pretty much as is. The F450 is right now is getting an oil change slash just a filter change. So it's not blown up. No, the 6.4 is good. We did opt and get a fuel uh, fill right fuel tank on the back of the flatbed. We can take on and off just so we can keep things going in the field. We're also going to run down to our test plots just about a quarter mile down the road by the Fair Oaks farm because the co-op is pretty much there set up and ready to go with an eight row planter set up as well as all the chemicals and fertilizers and seeds and everything we're going to need to get those planted. Let's pack up the shop, get ourselves going, and uh, let's set up our planters and move. So yeah, let's go. Now, if you guys have not already, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. As you do know, we are on the race to the 100,000 subscriber mark by the end of this year. So I'm trying to make sure everything is playlisted, separated out. I've been trying to restructure how the channel looks. But that is one big thing that I'm really trying to take forward on, is if I'm going to do this, i got to do it right. I obviously am not a real farmer, so half the stuff that you guys hear me say is probably going to be cringe, and you're just going to want to smack me because I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm going to admit it. 
But let's just kind of pop in here and uh, get these guys helped uh, eh, help these guys out since, as we mentioned, the uh, planting, we shouldn't need to move the irrigation system at all. I will have to get on the computer for that. They're going to have to do the fill-up points, or I'm going to have to do the fill-up points for that down there. But here is our eight-row, I think it's Ver... I can't remember how exactly you say this company. Uh, Vader... Vaderstat? Vaderstat. I don't know. Fader stat. There you go. But it's an eight row planter system with a dry fertilizer system in the front, which we got to load bags in from our international here. And after shutting all of that stuff off, because sorry about the engines, this is going to be our T6 150 New Holland. 150 horsepower to run this thing. We might be struggling a little bit, but not too bad. On the back of the Kenworth T880, we do have all of our chemicals. So we have the water, we have a base liquid fertilizer chemical we do have herbicide for later on if we want to apply just a little bit of pesticides we'll start loading those i think when i had it strapped down on the trailer it's going to be like 80 percent full or something 64 that's not bad because i mean in reality we're only doing these little chunks so that's what three passes maybe we'll, we'll figure it out as we go but we'll run over to our kenworth back up and get loaded up on the seat tenor and we should be able to go from there but we have Pioneer right there. We'll do DeKalb on this portion. Peterson Seeds. Do them right here. Asgro right on this plot. Channel. I believe that is all the ones that we had. And then Hefty if we have another one. Hefty we might have to do on one of these segments. If not, uh, we'll probably do him back here on one of these. So we are planting corn in this segment, that segment, that segment, and that segment. These five little portions are all going to be corn. The other side is going to be soybeans, and we'll test all of our different hybrids. All right, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so now we are up and over on our way slash already here to our drip irrigation system. Hefty wanted to put out a bunch of the silage corn seeds that they offer. Pioneer is going to have that entire square block to themselves with the beans. So all of our east side plots have been planted corn. We're going to put beans in on the next five plots coming this way. But we're going to keep the planter set right now for corn because we're going to plant all four of these sections in a Hefty's silage corn. So DeKalb has been planted. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn on my uh, water system here for just a little bit so we can get a little bit of irrigation going so they have a little bit of water to start with. Make sure everything is on. That is pumping. Okay, so we have water now running over the tops on down this field. It's going to be a very slow uh, consistency because of the fact that the ground is dry. we got a lot of cracks, but this will just kind of slowly drip and I just... I know the runoff's going to be quite a bit, so that bottom side's going to be a lot more wet than this top part. We'll leave that running for about, I think we'll maybe say two, three hours, just so we can make sure that uh, the ground is fully soaked. We don't have any rain in the forecast, so we're going to have to rely on this, but it is 9, 9.15 right now, uh, which technically would be like 10 o'clock if I didn't do halftime, but it's like 9.15 right now. We'll shut that off at 10 o'clock and we'll see where we're at with the ground moisture and everything else. So we just finished up talking with those co-op boys. They're gonna kind of hang out for a little bit. I am gonna get the water system pretty much ready to go on that Zomatic, so that way we can make sure that the crop is ready to go. But we're gonna make our way back now to the house and we will get the 3600 out doing the headlands on our house plot right around here. I can't remember exactly what, I think it's field 15. Yes, I forgot to turn my HUD back on. That's why I was like, why does this look a little weird? Without further ado, I see a Kinsey, I see some seed. Let's get to it. Man, I always had stories about the city life and the crazy nights. Figure I should probably give it a try. Baby, check it out, see what it's all about But the traffic was fast and the money was slow The people I met you never get to know I kind of miss this place I used to live back home 
Trying to save your time In case you're thinking about Breaking out the bucket list Girl, you can skip this Funny business Cause up there it's complicated And overrated Down here everything is understated That's alright by me I got everything that I need But there is breakneck Paycheck back to the Nebraska Farm Series, where the view of content that we have going on today is getting our 4940 John Deere sprayer ready to go spray its last round of fungicide on the beans. We currently have to run down to the co-op and get ourselves some of that chemical. We already have the water tanks sitting on the back of the house. We just need to load those up. We also need to run down to Ashley Farms as those guys are going to be helping us out a little bit with their own equipment, but they're also going to be selling us some old hay equipment. We're going to be bailing our ditches and uh, waterways in essence, getting that grass out of here. And we also have to mow that grass we have a government auction rhino 4155 bat wing that we found for pretty cheap about three grand and lastly but mostly firstly what we're going to do is load up our garden products which we invested about three thousand dollars into uh, an entire garden system irrigation plot so we can actually have a really nice garden for farmers market once we load that up we're going to run down to our pivot system quick with the test plots get that pivot system and the water pump turned on so that way we can start watering our crops so that's going to be a full event book of the day but i think what we're going to do is we're going to start out with our 6-4 here we're going to load up the garden stuff and we're going to head down to the pivot so we'll see you guys here in just a bit so we're coming up on the pivot here but one thing i wanted to note is that if there's anything that has been more true right now it is the weather it is august it is august 1st in the game but right now in the middle of august it feels like it's been like texas around here i mean it has been super high humidity for at least where we're at on a, on a normal standpoint it's been hot it's been muggy i mean it's just like a hey, kind of a weather and it's when you get up in the morning it's already 82 and it's just foggy and muggy and cloudy and it just it just sucks uh we're gonna be kind of coming into a little bit of a cool down here towards the weekend so i'm really excited about that but this shouldn't take too long as all i know is we just pretty much have to get our system set up here so let's get our pivot turned on get the sprayer turned on here let's start this thing going to the right all that's going to do is it's going to run a, a single pattern. Now, I should technically be fine to uh, get in and out of here because I just have to run up to the hill and turn on the drip system on the top of the hill. But in that sense, we're going to let that pivot run because this, uh, this has been like a really good yielding crop. We have had quite a few days and especially the last few weeks it has been scorching over 100 degrees non-stop and even though the humidity is relatively high by the afternoon it just it, i mean it physically it just dries out i mean it gets so hot so fast it goes from i think 72 degrees to an index of 115. we've been running these water systems like non-stop our water bill's been crazy but we need to do that to make sure this crop stays irrigated because uh, obviously, we know these these are really tough seeds for the sake of drought. And when you're getting about 140 bushel corn because the thing's just scorched, like 140 is not the worst thing on planet Earth. It's better than 100, but obviously we want to see three, 400 bushel corn 
making sure we can't even keep up with the tractor. So I'll say this much for at least 2000 extra dollars. It's not that bad just because we have a little bit extra money laying around. But what I do know that I need to do, we'll take the F450 here, probably just dump the load trail off down in the valley again. Uh, we're going to have Daryl come out here. Daryl's kind of been in and out for the last couple days, but Corey also is going to come out here. They're going to start working on the sprayer, getting that prep. I want to get the Batwing bought as well as have the hay equipment in, in order. So that way when we're waiting for the hay to dry in the ditches, we can go out and we can spray that fungicide. We also had confirmation I sent on my phone. We're sending the pivot back its other way. It's already made its half rotation, so that is splendid. We also have been checking on our water pump for the drip system. That's been running nice and smooth. We also have been seeing that our tile land, which like this is exactly why. See all that? Those are dirty beans. I do not want to see that. So we're going to get that fungicide in there and knock that stuff out. I might be a little too far along to be getting all the weeds out. I don't necessarily know. We've been trying to walk some of these beans to get a bunch of this stuff out. I mean, you can only really do so much, and especially with the way that the heat's been right now. Like, look at these beans. These are just dirty beans. We did the best we could, but we're going to at least hit, uh, knock out the rest of those beans. We just got off the phone with our agronomist over at Pioneer. We're going to be picking up our herbicide this afternoon, so that way we can start spraying fungicide on them beans. But here is our rhino bat wing. So this is uh this is this is a state a state thing. It's a public works mower, so it's definitely been through the ringer a time or two. One thing I don't necessarily know yet exactly is how much money I'm going to need to put into this thing, because I can tell you right now by staring at that, that blade is completely shot. It's a pretty nice mower, at least for what we need it to do. We'll probably pull this behind our 6405 in the ditches, and then we're obviously going to run over to Ashley Farms and go get our hay equipment to help out with that, and then they're probably going to bring over their uh, case, and we'll use the case and their new Holland baler to roll the bales. So I have word that Daryl now is at plot 20 down on the south side of the map. So we're going to run in. He already got our truck loaded. He just kind of left the skid steer. That or Corey's doing something because I know he's on the farm right now. What I'm really hoping for is that uh, I know our weeds in the bean fields are going to be the worst that we have right now. Our corn fields actually did really, really well this year. Just by walking around and looking at it early, we really hit those hard so we didn't have to worry about anything. The only thing we're worrying about more on the corn is of the drought. So just now rolling into the field, Daryl is going to swap me places. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this field since it's not really that big but I mean these are some really dirty beans when I look at it so I need to get into my auto track let's set our direction and what I want to do is set the boom width to 117 by auto width make sure we have our lines on and if I'm correct I need to press this button um where's it at there is our GPS. We are set currently. I'm trying to figure out where on earth my lines are. There we go. So what's really nice is that we actually have a spot and spray system installed on this. So as you guys can see, we're just basically hitting the weeds that we need to. And I'm going to hope that that means we don't need to buy nearly as much herbicide by the end of this uh, season. Just because of it... it this stuff gets really, really, really expensive. So all I really need to do right now, because we have it set on cruise, and we also have uh, the GPS running, is we just basically need to watch the, the boom widths. So coming around here after our first loop, and I got to tell you, so far, I'm very impressed with my spot spray system. We really knocked out, or, or really knocking out quite a bit of these things. So we'll let the computer take over here. And now we just kind of got to run back and forth. So just a quick update report so we can kind of show you guys what we're looking at. We have currently sprayed 20, 22, and 36. Well, we sprayed 20. 22 and 36 were sprayed a few weeks ago when we were doing uh, corn. We just haven't really gotten back in there. All I know is that I have confirmation that Daryl is currently on the move. He is now moving to field 39. This is our bean field. I am going to move the truck. Daryl is going to get started on 39. Once we roll in, I'm going to break out the drone and we're going to watch Daryl go to town with this because that's going to be kind of fun we got some catching up to do if we're going to catch up to the sprayers let's get on the road
out the rest of those fields what we are going to do is we are going to start getting our ditches cleared out here with the 6300 i gotta get this bad boy out of the shed put it in road gear a road range i should say and uh, helps when you open both doors to the quonset not just one now the point behind this is pretty simple basically going to use this to rip up the ditches and get ourselves a couple of extra bales. Now, I'm obviously not going to be selling these for profit or, well, I mean, I could, but I really want to clean these up, get them to my neighbor who is looking to have some of these bales done. But mainly we're going to be mowing the ditches, getting some bales, getting grass out of there, and just trying to clean up the farmyard a little bit. I hate to say it, like, I know this stuff would not be cleaning up very well down in this gully, but I probably should take this all out and then just whack all of this. Rake it in, bale it up, clear it out. I might actually do that. I'm going to kind of get a pass and I'm going to see what it looks like. Plus, you guys will kind of get to see what the dynamics of this look like. Looks to be laying down some half-decent grass. Nothing fancy, though, of course. So what I think we need to do, let's just put this thing in park here quick. Turn that down. Is I'm going to get the 450 over there. We're going to move this disc, I need that cultivator, and that trailer. And then we can clear out this whole little area. Let's try going over here to that. Drop it into fourth. Get right up here along the corn stalks. Just kind of follow this waterway because if I can make at least, ah, say two bales or so, two, three bales out of this, I'd be pretty happy. So obviously I'm not going to be trying to run over any corn, but we do have like these little inlet pieces. They're just little waterways. I don't really ever have to worry about them but uh, it kind of gives me just a little bit more grass to, in essence, cut. So that really does help out with uh, cleaning up the area. This is where it's going to be really nice. What we should do is probably should bring a swather down in here and get all of this stuff around. But in between and around these, I might as well just kind of do my own thing. So we'll go down to the field entrance here and we'll kind of clean up around all these little ditch spots. For what I ended up buying, the quality of the cut and basically how it's shredding it, is actually pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm actually going to send the pivot. Hang on a minute. Let me get on my phone here quick. I'm going to send the pivot all the way around so that we can get al right along this side of the corn. So obviously I don't have my HUD on right now because I'm still kind of trying to get a couple of drone shots as well as up close things. But uh, in essence, like I said, we're going to send the pivot. That'll help us at least get take care of that issue. So after a quick hop, skip, and a jump, we left Corey down on the pivot system, trying to get that figured out. Daryl did, I called him, I asked him uh, what exactly does he have left to, in essence, spray. Right now, they are currently in the process of refilling the sprayer, but all he has left to do is our tile ground, which should be the last field of our entire thing, so we are pretty much ready to go through till harvest. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Klein. I got a couple questions for you. Obviously, we are in agreement that I'm going to be buying off your hay equipment, but is there a way that you could possibly, you would get the bales in full? Uh, would you possibly be able to help me out with some baling? I mean, I'd be willing to pay you if you wanted to take the bales as payment or whatever you might want to do for just cattle feed, but I, I could really use some help right about now trying to get things cleaned up, and uh, I can do the three grand for the little, the little equipment that you're asking for. So, as we know, this is the character Kevin, but I just kind of went with it because it kind of makes sense for what he's doing. But Mr. Klein, we're looking at a seven foot wide H&S hay tether as well as uh, just an older Massey Ferguson like six wheel rake. It's pretty simple. It's, I mean, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six. 
with that all loaded up, we are going to be on our way back to the house. So we'll see you guys here in just a bit. I don't know exactly what tractor I'm going to be putting on these rakes. Because the 6430, of course, anything that I technically have is going to be overpowered for this. But, eh, we can make it work. And for anybody wondering what it looks like stacked, it's actually not bad. But, of course, you'd have to say, oh, I put a little towel on top of that so it wouldn't scratch my paint. Even though nobody would actually do this to their truck. That'd be leaving an, 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 an indent, like the size of a crater. I think I need to get hail damage assessments after this load. There is his little case maximum. I kind of, he, he wants me to run it just because he knows that it's like, you should switch to red. And I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I know they got those CVTs and those things. They're super easy to drive. I drive red trucks, but I'm just, I'm just a green guy. We're going to roll on this. He's going to teach me how to drive this thing, operate it. It's got a nice New Holland bail monitor in there already strapped up and set up, ready to go. I Hopefully, we can get some grass. I tried letting this grass dry out. It was like, oh, this is fresh grass. So I tried running the tether over it, and it just didn't work. So what I'm hoping for is that this will allow me to make, in essence, a grass bale. But Kevin says he'll have a use for them, so I'm not too worried. But I'm going to get to bailing, and uh, we'll see you guys here in uh, probably a little bit. It also really does not help that we're doing this with a tractor that probably doesn't have near the amount of power that it needs to be doing this, but we're also bailing really thick grass with really thick windrows. And no pun intended, but that wraps that up on things on the farmyard. Let's make our way down to the irrigation pivot. I got my remote so that way we can make sure we set that pivot to go. I can actually do it from my phone if I really want to, but... Eh. A little manual labor never killed anybody, except that bale is now crushing the beans, so we might have to readdress that later. Let's get these ones down at the irrigation pivot done, and then we pretty, like I said, I'm just, I'm just wrapping things up here. No pun intended. Now this is our last run of grass itself. Currently the bale counter sits at 44, and I guarantee you by the end of this, there's a good chance we'll probably be at at least 47, maybe 48. But I think overall, we literally did. We got everything on our checklist done. Kevin was able to come out here and help us get this baling done. Now, of course, I've basically done all the baling work. He just really wants me to buy this tractor off of him, but everything just came together so beautifully, and I can't thank this enough. <laughs> Welcome back to the Nebraska Farm Series, where we're going to have kind of a slight part one mixed with a part two, all in the same episode, because in the middle of this episode, we're actually going to be doing a live stream this weekend, doing some corn harvest or bean harvest, whichever one I'm on. I haven't necessarily decided yet. It'll kind of be weather pending, but with that, our first portion of today's episode is we're uh, doing this a little bit ahead of time. This is older footage. We're coming out here to our test plots as we've gotten word that uh, Corey's currently riding shotgun with me. We're going to help out get some of the hefty silage corn done here while there's still uh, some stuff left. But the tasks for today are pretty much going to be as followed for this first portion. We're going to help out the test plot guys here get some of the silage corn cut. We will come back later in the uh, few weeks from now and help out with the beans and the corns. Just obviously those aren't done maturing yet. But then we're going to start getting prepped for harvest. I got to get the combines out. I got to get them both set up for beans. I got to get the carts hooked up. I got to get the fuels filled. I mean, there's just a lot to do. I've been doing a little bit of it on the backside right now, but uh, we'll let those two warm up here for a second. It's about 55 degrees out here on this crisp October morning. I know it says October in the top right, but if you're chopping silage, you're probably going to be doing that a little bit more into September, even if it was lucky enough early, low, late August, so uh, Corey is going to be in the Jaguar and I will be in the Kubota here. From what we've heard, this is pretty great yielding corn. I'm really hoping that produces the same way as I went into the mods game files uh, for the map itself and I changed prices. It We're now running the realistic economy. Beans are about 12 bucks right now. That might be a little high. I'm not 100% sure because you know I'm not a farmer, but corn is at four bucks, five bucks at best. And dried corn, it might, this one might be a little high as well, but it's right now sitting at about 630. Uh, can drop down to about 580 something at most. But yeah, this is going to be real priced, real priced crop. So I'm going to be 
banking on the fact that this corn is going to produce on my end probably 200 plus bushel. Uh, I know there's going to be some really dry ground that's probably not even going to produce maybe 180, 160 if I'm lucky. I want to be pushing at least 220, 230 on average, I would say. But Corey decided to quit on the job a little early. That's fine. And now you can say you're fired. We'll just finish this out ourselves. But that's all I'm going to do with the silage here. So we're going to shut this off. Let the co-op guys come back up here. I just kind of wanted to check out the land, see how well it was doing. I mean, it is my ground, so I do want to check what my ground is doing. Let's fire off the Kubota and let's go get our own ducks in a row by prepping for beans. Now, if you guys have not already, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. As you do know, we are on the race to the 100,000 subscriber mark by the end of this year. Any help is appreciated. And if you haven't already, be sure to also check out the Nebraska Farm Series playlist with all of its little, unique, interesting video ideas that I kind of tend to pitch together. There's stuff uh, by installing drain tile, which is the bean field just over across the bridge. We've done irrigation installations. We've done this test plot. We've done a handful of really cool projects on this series, so be sure to look at that and see if anything else interests you. Now that we're rolling back up to my farm, the order of operations is going to be as follow. We need to get the combines out first we're gonna do a little bit of a juggle in the sheds because it's I haven't really touched a whole lot since last time but I did kind of clean up the yard quite a bit we did get all the bales sold off uh, my neighbor that helped me out with the baling he ended up giving me about 1500 bucks for all the bales that we had sitting on the yard just as a little bit of a help commission since I mean nobody really works for free nor does anybody get any products for free we have to get the sprayer out of the way here. We have to get both of these planters out. So we're going to use the uh, 9430 to get the DB120 and the 8345 to get this Kinsey out. The sprayer is pretty simple. The 4940 is just going to sit on the opposite side of the shed. Since we're already in the tractor, it's going to be pulling out the 3600. Let's just get that attached quick here and pull it out. And we'll drop that here in the equipment parking lot. Let's fire this bad boy up and we'll move this out like so. Now that we got that headache out of the way, let's go and grab the avalanches, which are sitting in the back. Now, no pun intended, but by the means that we're going to be starting with the beans, I'm going to get both carts set up by getting the scales in them, calibrating, getting everything prepped on that, but we're not going to be using another cart until we get to corn. We have eight bean fields to five corn fields. And the beans are hoping to produce a lot more this year since I did some of it with bean on beans like the tile ground, but also to help get some nitrogen back in the soil. That's just the way the crop rotation ended up happening. I, I wanted to plant a bit more corn, but the lands just weren't ready for that. Now, the other cart tractor we have is that 8430. It's uh, sitting in the Quonset here. I don't think I'm going to need to move... Uh, the 8100 at all but we'll kind of sneak by the tires pop in i did use this tractor over the summer so it, the battery in it's not going to be too bad the sts i'm thinking i'm gonna have to jump that because it's been sitting since heck knows when but uh, yes we'll be able to sneak this thing out just watch our tires make sure we don't hit anything if corn's pulling 230 and we got at least one combine pulling 16 rows in there's no way in heck we're going to be able to keep up with the demands. We're both carts now digged out of the shed, currently on the front lines. I might just power these off. I don't think I'm going to put the co the uh, the planter back in yet, but let's go dig out those combines. Now, the S680, I'm not worried about with the battery level on this. I fired this up about a week and a half ago just to see whether or not it'd be running or I needed to hook it up, put a battery charger on it. I kept some charges on it over the winter, but this one should be fine. The STS, I know that's going to be a hard start. That one's been sitting for at least since last harvest. We need to get everything refueled. We need to get everything greased. We already know the protocol. It's just putting that protocol into action. Now, this thing I'm going to have to dig out. So, 8100, you got to move. Okay, it is dusty up in here. Let's see if we got anything. Nope, that is deader than a doornail. Okay, give me just a minute. Okay, jumpers have been hooked up. Let's see if she gives. There we go. Took just a little bit of time, but 
Luckily, it wasn't too cold. Otherwise, this thing would have been turning for a little bit longer than I would have wanted to. There we go. That is clicking. We'll move on to the Thunder Creek here, and we'll check back with you guys when we're pretty much ready to start moving into the field. And we're going to move the operation down here to field 34. I'm going to clear this out, and depending on weather, I might go up to 37 and kind of work these two fields together, put uh, the STS on one and the S-Series on the other. And if weather works out and we dry enough corn out, we're going to probably start with 22 and 36. And then we'll kind of start working our way back. So 26, 39, 25, might go up and do six at some point. I don't want to be flipping back and forth too often, but uh, next time you guys see us, we're going to be convoying down to 34, or I'll have everything already down there, might be starting to cut. Either way, we'll see you then. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the start of bean harvest. Daryl right now is currently running, and these are some very dusty beans. This is some dry stuff. Uh, Daryl right now is currently running the STS in our field 37. I'm running down to work with Corey on field uh, whatever it is. I think it's 34. I'm going to start working on that. We just Daryl's just dumping in the truck when he gets full, but I'm running with the 8345R. I'll run the Headland Pass with the S680, and then I'm going to hand that off to Corey. You're fired. But I just decided to take the mule because all of my trucks are currently occupied right now. But yeah, I'm going to get started cutting the headlands on our bean field here, and then we should pretty much just be on the roll. We don't really have a whole lot else going. All right, Corey, I see how it is. Sit in the tractor with the heater, but let me freeze by getting in a freezing cold combine. Don't start the important one now. You're fired. Fires like a top. Now, if we look at our yield monitor right now, we are pulling at about 125. I did notice, though, that on that field in particular, right in the middle, there must be a different soil type because we were pulling like we did just over there where it was in that uh, either 100% to maybe 85% range. Daryl's giving us the signal that he is full, so he's going to run over to the truck, get dumped, and start back up again. I think we got eight of these fields. If we got eight of these things and they're all producing like this, whew, we're going to have ourselves a good profit. And Corey's just going to back in here. I'll get this completely emptied out. This one does empty out faster than the STS, though. I will say that. Make sure everything looks good. Go over the front. Make sure nothing's jammed. We're good. got good news and bad news the good news is we're getting a lot more grain out of these fields than i thought we would the bad news is i came unprepared for that we've gotten what this trailer holds it's not legal but 1600 bushel the fields are yielding amazingly right now and i'm currently off to at least sell one trailer load because we've already burnt through three thousand dollars in just wages between uh cory and daryl so we're going to go make ourselves some money, but after this, we'll see you guys post live stream. So if you're watching the video, go check this video out in the top right hand corner. We did an entire live stream, either finishing up some more beans or starting to cut into corn. And then we'll finish off with the rest of this video. So 
We'll catch you guys after the live stream segment. Now, after successfully checking back in from the post live stream, we have officially now swapped over to corn. I wanted to try and pick this ground because this is uh, environmentally, we have the best score on this ground. But we also have rain coming here probably in the next 20 minutes. But because I have it at halftime, I think it'll probably be about 40 minutes. I think I had an hour. But this ground is doing a lot worse than I thought it would. I thought this was going to be 200 bushel corn. And I got on the line with FS Club trying to find out what mod showed the bushels. Like, I know it's unit convert, but there was another one that showed like the actual bushels to the acre. And that was vehicle HUD extension. Well, I found out the hard way. This is actually 180 bushel corn. Now, Daryl uh, decided to swap over and take over the S680. He was going to run just strictly the STS, but if we get the STS back out, he's going to be running that since he just says he's more comfortable in that combine. Kevin ended up taking off for the night. Uh, we'll kind of catch back up with him later. Now, once we get done shelling corn in this field, what I'm going to do is run over to the test plots and kind of help out those guys with the co-op get the corn picked out of there as we'll have at least the bigger part of our corn ground done before the rain hits afterwards i'm probably gonna have to swap back to beans because moisture is going to be too high but we'll address that problem when we get there so i guess from here we'll just kind of go with what flows we'll finish off the field and we'll see you guys over at the test plots again Just finishing up everything here i'm pretty disappointed with the results right now of this of these two of this field in general i didn't think it was going to be this bad but i mean sometimes things happen what i am going to do however is we got to try and run over to those test plots here before the night is over so i'm actually going to take my truck i'm going to drop the header trailer put that on the service truck or i could probably take the service truck actually let's just do that we're just going to take the service truck, keep things... We'll just keep things simple, but I'm going to shut everything off here quick, just so we can at least know that everything's taken care of. And let's run over to those test plots quick and try and get on, uh, get on some of that corn before it ends up raining here. The hardest part about getting around this map is it's kind of hard to decipher where's the fastest way to get anywhere. Because this one road right here, like if this was an actual T intersection, this instead of having that big bridge this was a t intersection it would be so much easier to get around the map but that one this one road right here it's like the only one alleyway to really get from one side of the map to the other and if you don't have a very quick vehicle yeesh, not a whole lot of back roads you can take to get anywhere umrv is a little bit uh, easier to navigate but i still love this map it's just that one really long drive especially if you're going ham on this but I'm pretty hopeful our other ground's going to perform a little bit better than that. I really thought that ground was going to perform a lot better than 180 bushel to the acre. Now that I actually have the yield, like I can see the intake coming in the combine, I'm really interested to see how well beans are really pulling in because beans are doing absolutely fantastic. We, on the live stream, pulled five loads equivalent worth because the one truck hauls like a truck and a half. We pulled five, basically five loads worth of soybeans out of that field six up in the top left hand corner of my farm but here are the boys we're rolling up yeah it's kind of like a really small kind of combine so i think it's only got like an eight row header on it so and we'll kind of come down in here and we'll see where they need us 
All right, boys, so the plan is just going to be kind of try and pick these off. I know that header is eight, and this is 16 wide, so we got two passes, two different hybrids. Eight rows, one hybrid. Eight rows is another hybrid. Uh, we'll be picking off Pioneer stuff first, and we'll roll over to DeKalb, then Peter, uh, Peterson, Asgro, and I think wrapping it up with Channel, because I believe the uh, we didn't have any hefty corn come out here, so they might be able to get a spot next year, but this year they just didn't end up getting their stuff in. The silage ground up on the top of the hill, by the looks of it, the first two the first two hybrids for that silage corn, they actually were full of weeds down on the bottom. And if you go and look at the other uh, hefty on the backside, as well as that decal, they had no weeds on the ground. It was really clean cutting. Make sure we disable our straw swath. And on the separator. And let's pick some of someone else's corn. So this is the Pioneer Hybrid. I don't even know which one it is, but on my monitor it says it, but I'm just not gonna be the one that tries to know what corn hybrid numbers are, especially since I've seen Pioneers. <laughs> HY32C. <laughs> Pretty dusty stuff, but 233 bushel corn. That is some good stuff from Pioneer. See if I can turn this thing around without it being too much of a nuisance. You know, if my corn pulled this good, I'd be a lot happier right about now. This is 235 bushel corn. Holy smokes. Wait a minute. I know what it was, besides Daryl taking his paycheck out for the hour. Uh, this is on irrigated ground. This is irrigated corn. I don't wonder mine was pulling 180. Well, 233 average bushels to the acre. I'd say that's pretty good getting 55 out of there for just Pioneer stuff. Both hybrids perform very well. I think the stuff on this side, uh, the north side did a little bit better. We'll just jump into the gravity wagon that they got sitting out here with the 7R. I think I need to invest in some irrigation systems. Because if my beans were already doing what they did and they weren't even irrigated, I don't want to know what these beans are going to do. Daryl and I are currently trucking away right now back to the farm with two full loads of corn in the hoppers to go to the dryer. But if there's anything that is starting to affect us more now is the drought. I can't tell you how dusty it has been out here and the corn is just like when you hit the stalks, the cobs are just falling off. The beans are even worse. We're trying to set up the combine to where we can at least get the beans to go in the combine. So the STS and the Kenworth have been sitting down at that south field for the last week and a half. So we can't seem to get these things to not have the peas just fall on the ground. There's literally nothing going in the combine. But Daryl and I have at least arrived. Kevin right now is running in the S680. Poor guy, he's getting harder and harder to get up in the cab of that thing, but he does the best job that we've had so far cutting the corn the way it's been planted. So we're gonna go try and dump while Corey runs the grain cart. Excuse me for a second while I move the grain truck that I forgot was sitting here from earlier. But that's just the way that we have for efficiency going right now. But once we get these trucks unloaded, we're going to head back. We fortunately have not had any issues so far. We've had one or two little minor inconveniences with our combines with uh, wet corn, but we've not had any breakdowns. We haven't had any major stops to production, and we're going to try and keep that the best we can. Now, the S680, that's another story. We're trying to get as much as we can done with the combine itself before we have to take it into service. Issues being is that the combine's starting to act up. Uh, quite a bit now, so we really got to be careful But either way, let's get this last hopper unfolded and we'll start making our way back to the field Yep, must be I think it's the first uh, first Wednesday of the month. I don't know why that's going off Hang on a minute of it. Hang on a minute. I got a call from Corey What The what's on fire? No, 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 no. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, I'm gonna find my truck. We'll be there in just. Ah, hang on. We'll be there in just as fast as we can. There, we'll get in. We got. I, I can't. I can't have time to explain. The combine's on fire right now. Get in the truck. 
So I guess Corey was just pulling around the field or whatnot, and all of a sudden Kevin radios into him that the, the, the header started to spark underneath of it, and all the corn leaves with the dust, it's, it ignited, and then he tried to get out of the combine, and Co Kevin ended up falling out of the combine. So he dragged him out, and they couldn't get the blaze under control now. So there's a big, there's a blaze that's going on right underneath the combine. Did he, did you remember if he blowed out the combine last night? Because I told him to go blow out the combine in case this were to happen. Oh, I hope he did. I really don't want to have to deal with this. Where's the con? Okay, Corey's over here right now. I think we're just trying to sporad sporadically get these things out. Fire department says they should be en route. At least that's what I heard off the phone. Oh, I can hear it. I need to see what's going on, though, first. No, 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 no. Uh, grab the, grab the fire extinguisher out of the back. We got to get this somewhat under control before fire gets here. See if we can at least somewhat dispose of the flames. Ah! This is not good. This is not good. I'm just going to have to go and grab the 9430 and get the disc on the back, and we're just going to disc around it. I don't care if I'm running over crop. I do not want to lose that combine. Daryl, I'm going to drop you off here with Corey and Kevin. Just check on them. Make sure they have everything until EMS gets here. But I'm going to get the 9430, and there is the brush truck. Okay, brush truck has arrived by the looks of it. Yup. Uh, where is the other guys? Comes the... Okay, they're all coming down the road. There goes the engine. Ambulance taking a jump. Holy cow. Okay, and then there's the tanker truck. I got to get this disc. If I don't get this disc going right now, that fire is going to spread, and it's all going to go downhill. I guess while I have to drive at 25 miles an hour, because that's about all the faster this thing goes, if you guys have not already, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. As you guys know, we are now on the race to 75,000 public subscribers by the end of this year. I I really don't know what to think about this right now. I, just, I don't want to lose this tractor either, but we can't afford to lose any more than we already have. I'm going to ring in on the radio and see what the situation is going on right now with... If they've gotten the blaze under control or if it's gotten worse or how Kevin's doing. Does anybody have a copy down on the field play right now? What's going on? Hey, Kevin, you're being attended to, but the fire has spread. Ugh. All right, let them know I'm on my way right now with the disc. I'm going to be going right around where the combine's at. There's going to be a little bit of a radius. I'm going to have to tear it up. I'm going to, I don't want to risk a 9430, but it's... I'll try and control the blaze the best I can. We can't let the embers spread over to the tree line. That would be a no-go. Just spray the, have them spray the trees, do whatever they need to do, but I am on my way as fast as I can. So at least Kevin's being taken care of. It's not his fault. I should have went through here and picked some of the rocks. I just didn't think that we'd have this big of a problem, but by the up, I can see the black smoke over there. Oh, no! But currently, the brush truck, the tanker truck, and the engine are over at the combine. Kevin is with Corey at the ambulance over here, at least getting taken care of. How bad is it? Oh, no! <laughs> the combine's on fire! The com combine's on fire! Drop it down. Here we go. Let's get this blaze under control around here. I don't want to break any shanks, but we got to at least control this. Look at how dry this is. This is what I mean by the blaze is just becoming a problem. If we lose only this little bit of corn, I'll be fine with that. But I'm going to tear up as much of this as I can, so that way we don't have any of these embers. Oh, no. That's my good combine. Oh. This should be wide enough of a disc path. I, I don't want to do any more, but... I'm trying to make sure this thing does not spread any way, shape, or form. Well, let's see if we can go be of assistance in any way. I know I'm not going to mess with the paramedics. I have no idea what they're doing over there, but I need to see what we can do over here. I'm just going to have to leave this to the professionals. Guys, just do the best you can. Please get that thing out. I put the barrier around it so we don't have to worry about that, but please just do what you can. I really don't want to get rid of this combine. <laughs> They're going to try the best they can to control the blaze on that. It's They're starting to work around it, but the problem is there's so much stuff inside the combine that it's just frying the internals as we speak. I want to check on Kevin. So, Kevin, are you all right? Like, do you... Is he, is he going to have... Is his leg broken? Is his hip broken? What happened? 
So he's got a stress fracture to his tibia on the left leg, a broken hip, and a couple broken or cracked ribs. <coughs> the smoke's getting to me, guys. Sorry. <coughs> so I'm just going to get the cart a furthest point away from all of this stuff. I need to go get the 9430, but I don't know if they need me to do any more fire barriers. But Kevin's going to get transported to Hay Springs Medical Center. Seems to be that Kevin possibly broke his tibia, which is the bottom bone below your femur on his left leg. I possibly also broke his hip, and then there's a couple cracked ribs. I mean, it's painful. I'm not going to do anything, anything about that, but I need to go and do what I can do. We'll catch you guys back in a little bit when something else is hopefully not going wrong. So Corey and the EMS right now are currently on their way to Hay Springs Medical Center. I've been checking out with them. They're, they they have everything under control. By the sounds of it, I've been hearing that the fire is now under containment. I don't even want to look at my combine right about now. This is the last thing that I wanted to have happen. Please don't be bad. Oh. Not my baby. Oh. Oh. Well. And they got the fire out. Some of these stickers are a little bit bad. A little charred. God, what even sparked this thing? Fire investigators at least on scene, so I'll be able to figure out what happened with the... Did something get jammed in the rollers? I really don't know what to think about this right now. This is... Ah, this sucks! This is completely... This is gone. This is just gone. I guess let's see how bad it looks on the inside of the motor. It's this, this is just gone. There ain't no saving this. Ah! We were doing so well too, that's half the problem. Ugh. I'm gonna let the fire investigators kind of figure out what's going on here, but for right now I'm down one combine, one combine operator. And I don't really know what to do. The only thing I can do is find a way to drag that thing out of the field, but I'm going to let that sit for a little while. We're going to let that kind of cool down in the situation. I'm going to talk with the fire, the fire chief and everyone else that's out here and try and get something situated. We might just have to run down to the bean field and try something there because now Corey's even gone. I don't trust him in the combine anymore. And all it is, is just me and Daryl. So Daryl and I are probably going to have to run beans, beans ourselves. That's fine, but God, that is a blow right there. I could have sworn we'd have had... I mean, thank you knowing that everyone's okay, but looks like now we're just going to have to submit to insurance and hopefully we can figure something out. So while I go and try and figure out my next move, we'll catch you guys probably down somewhere with the beans or maybe we might be taking the 9430 back. I really don't know what I'm going to be doing right now. I... I'm a little dazed at the moment, and I don't know how much of our crop destruction is going to be affected by this. But we'll let this settle down for a bit, because I, I don't want to even touch this thing for the rest of the day. We can leave it here. There's no fluids really leaking. It's just, it's been crispified. We lost our combine. Hopefully I can get something close to it. If not, the insurance company's nice. We can get maybe something newer, but it's hard telling. We got word that Kevin is doing all right. He got admitted in. They have to do an emergency surgery, though, to start working on that tibia. As when he fell out, it completely fractured both bones, and there's a very good chance that if they don't do anything with it now, it could cause an infection because it has broken enough that they need to get it surgically fixed. We'll definitely go and check out his x-rays here once we get done, but... Uh, Daryl and I right now, we're riding two and two together. We need to try... We'll... we'll, we'll Go in and check on Kevin here later tonight. Corey's going to try and come back and help us out with the trucks for a little bit. But I guess the only thing we can really do now is jump down to the STS and just work on and try to finish up some beans. Hopefully we don't lose another combine again because I'd really not like to be down two combines right about now. And we'll get the 8345R and the STS fired up and try and keep this ball rolling. Now with me in the combine and Daryl in the cart... I'm lucky I actually did not have my drone inside the S-Series as I was going to go run for a couple passes this afternoon. That obviously is now not going to happen. 
Got about 123 average bushels to the acre on these beans. We're just dropping so many of them since it's so dry. I've been trying to find the best way to get this in the combine without dropping almost 80% of the pods on the ground. We did try and clean the combine out this morning to try and get ready to go back in if we could maybe cut some beans, which I probably should have just went down here and did that. That S, the S680 needed to be serviced and I, I put it off for way too long. That is completely my fault. I, I just hope that I can at least get something for value on that combine because if I have to finish all of the fields that I have with the STS, it's not gonna be a problem, but that hurts now that we only have one combine when we used to be running two. So I'll pop up with the drone. I'll kind of, I'll be able to fly it while I'm in the combine, hopefully. If not, then we'll just swap positions with Daryl and we'll get some more shots. And after this uh, field, probably we'll run into Kevin and see how he's doing at the medical center. Welcome back to the Nebraska Farm Series, which is a huge crossover with the Prairie State Tractor Series. I am finally, I, I'm working out some numbers for the insurance company because I'm getting the policy finally completed. Like, I'm getting my money from the insurance company on the S680. It definitely felt like it took a little bit longer than it needed to to get this straightened out. But either way, I'm excited because now we'll have some money coming in later this today or this week. That'll be credited so we can go and look into another combine. Now let's quit wasting time and we'll get ourselves out to the field and begin cutting beans again. Now if you guys have not already, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. Since we are on the race to 75,000 public subscribers by the end of this year, the goal has never felt closer. We almost are actually cresting over 70 and I would even consider that a success for this year, guys. We've had so much fun. There's so much content. And the next video right after this is going to be the mega cut that I'm going to piece together showcasing the entire year that we have spent on this farm. We have completed one full season. Pretty much besides finishing harvest, we have completed a full season. Rolling up to the field now, nothing changes. We left off right where we were on the live stream, and I'm pretty excited about that since we have the full crew finally back. Kevin has returned with us with the fleet, now running back in the STS. But we all know that it's just so much more fun when you can have everybody back and healthy. Kevin still is slow. He's doing about 85% of the things he shouldn't be doing, but he's an old fart and we know how old farts are. They won't let anybody tell them what to do. Kevin's giving me the go ahead. So we'll let that old fart take care of what he needs to do. I'm gonna run back to the tractor quick and empty out as, as many beans as I can. Now, hang on a second. Would you look at that? Our old pal Marty, let's see what he has to say. Hey, Marty, how you doing? I haven't talked to you since uh, the old combine went up in flames. Hey, Buck. Yeah, I heard about that. Glad everyone is safe. Yeah, it definitely was not anything fun, but I know you've been on the lookout for me on the, any combines that have been rolling in. Do you happen to have anything on the lot that might interest me at all or could probably help out getting this harvest finished up? Can like a S780, maybe an S790 if you want to go a little bigger? Probably like an S780 at this point. I don't think I'd be able to, I mean, I want to get at least an S series. I can't afford an X9. I can't afford whatever it might be. Just, I got to stay as cheap as I can, but at least get something that's going to help out with this farm size. I actually just got a one-year-old S780 on trade. Really? It's uh, from a local guy. He rolls combines every year. It's got the big LSW tires. It doesn't even have 500 hours on it. Really? It'd be perfect for what you need. Uh, probably. Well, definitely let me know, or if you can maybe even get some shots of it, send me a link. I'll take a peek at it. We'll see what we can do with that. Yeah, sure. I'll put it on hold for you, Buck. Let me know what time I can expect you to come by, and we'll take a look at it, talk some numbers. 
Well, I could definitely do that. I don't know when I'm going to be able to come out there yet, but we'll see what we can do with uh, what's going on. Yep. Okay. See you then. All Have right. a good one. Yep. See you, bud. Well, that was interesting. Oh, Marty just gave us a ring from Prairie State Tractor himself. If anybody doesn't know who Marty is, Marty is the head marketing manager of Prairie State Tractor. He's a big dog on campus, and he took a lot of time to help me out make this video today. So if you guys haven't, please check out Prairie State Tractor in the description down below. But it sounds like Marty has an S780 that he's looking at, and he's going to send me a link to. You guys probably saw a little bit of the snippets from when he was out at the dealer over in Illinois. When I can maybe find a time to sneak out and head over to Illinois and check out this combine, or if Marty even gives me like an in-depth preview of it, we'll see what we can go from there. But for now, I need to focus with the boys and getting all these beans out of the ground. Speaking of beans on the ground, let's actually check and see how well our, our chopper's been doing throwing out, if we're throwing as many beans out the back as I thought. Well, the bean stubble, it's nothing to be proud of, but oh, it looks like we're actually getting a FaceTime by... Uh, Good old Marty, so gonna have to answer that. Uh, I guess about wanna leave him hanging. Hey, Marty. Figured it'd be easier here to do a quick FaceTime call, show you the unit here, Buck. Uh, we'll walk Probably around real idea. quick. Let me know if you got any questions about it. We got the Goodyear on LSWs there. on the front, 1250s. Okay, that'll be good for compaction. Not, not too bad, yeah, not too bad of tread. A whole lot of tread left on those. No, not, uh, you got a power cast tailboard down here. Okay, that'll help out. It's with camera ready. Yet, so at least get it spread right. Let's hop up in the cab real quick. Uh, you got the 40, I can agree to that 40 Gen 4 cool. command center right here. Joystick. It says the foot nice. pegs. Um, Daryl's going to like that. Screen up there if you want. All in all, super nice unit. Uh, I'm still, still like I said, insurance things other than that. Okay. You think we can make a deal? I think we can, bud. Get some stuff set up and we'll let you know. All right. Let me know for sure. Sounds good, bud. We'll see you. I guess now I'm going to have to try and sneak out, meaning I'll have to leave these boys to do the job. Let's pack up the trucks. We'll radio to the boys that we're making a field trip now to Illinois. Fill up the tank, get on the interstate, and let's make the rest of this harvest happen. Is there anybody in this place that might be named Marty? I'm trying to find him. Buck! Marty! I'm there thinking of a song. I don't know. Well, it was a handful of a drive, but I think really? it might be worth it. Where might we be able to find said combine? Yeah, let's come out out front here. You get a glimpse of it when you come in? I th I think I saw it, but I couldn't tell exactly which one it was. Oh, it's the one with the big tires. It's the one with the big tires. The one okay. with the big tires. Well, I know we've been. I know you gave me a little bit of a run through over FaceTime, but of course, it's it's always best to somewhat see these things in person and get a full on visual of what we're working with. If you look down that way, we got a we got a couple options. Maybe you can look over. All right, sweet. What's the deal with this? Because I'm gonna have to finance. I sold some grain, so I'll be able to put a really good down payment on it, but I'm still gonna need to finance. Yeah, we got some special offers going on. So if you wanted to do like, uh, we could do a 12 month, no payment, no interest waiver, or we could do like a 3.9 rate for five years, something like that. If that works good for you. What what would your what would your take be? I've already been talking to a graphic designer. What would your take be if I did this? Because I know I know I'm really a big fan of you guys. If I wrapped the combine with a Prairie State, like, doesn't have to be huge, mm. but it's a full on full blown advertisement. You might have to see that. Uh, that graphic drawn up yeah, I, could I could do maybe uh you know five to ten off this something like that like i said this is uh it's nearly new there's under 500 hours on the engine and the separator uh it's contour master you got the premium led lights on the front as you can see you got starfire 7000 up top and then you got the 26 foot uh extended unload auger and uh we i think we got the the folding grain tank bin extensions on here. Well, let's just see, turn key. Now you were talking about the monitor system. I am probably gonna have to get another, this would be, what what, what gen monitor would you say to put in this thing? Gen right four? now it's got a, a gen four on it. We do have gen fives in stock now, if you want to swap that out. So I'm pretty much willing to go quite a bit of ways to try and get these fields done. Especially if I can run with you guys, that makes it even better. Yeah, say we knock, knock off that uh, ten grand for the uh, the wrap on there. We're looking at uh, four eighty nine nine. Yeah. So you want to go into my office? We can talk some numbers. Absolutely. Type it all up. See what it looks like. 
All right, Buck. So we got the the Draper. It looks like we can bring that down to 110. I can do 65 on the corn head. And then we talked about going uh, 480 on the combine. Looking at a grand total of 655. What I might end up doing is the money that I get from the S680 and the uh, say the 616 that burnt up, that's about $250,000 is what I got for that. If I use that as the down payment, and then we finance the rest, I can do that over time. Because I'm just going to sell the honeybee and just keep the cash on there for either the payments that go towards this or something else. Marty, pleasure doing business with you guys. Really do appreciate your time, man. I, I'm ready to just have this harvest done and be over with. Hey, I'm so hey don't forget your free hat. Oh, my free hat. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm so a yes. free hat with a purchase of you, half of a you mortgage. You've earned your hat. <laughs> my hat. Well, we'll see you, Marty. Thank you, sir. Bye, Buck. Catch you later. So that is all that we needed to do for that. Uh, Prairie State is now in touch with the bank. We're getting all of our financing situation figured out between the insurance money, so all that is going to go towards my down payment. I am going to call Marty and let him know. I'll send him the graphic design that I had of the S780 with the wrap for the combine on it. So let's see what he thinks of it. Prairie right. State Tractor, you got Marty. Hey, Marty, it's it's Buck again. I just sent you via text the graphic design that's on the side of the S780. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, between the right side, left side, and it should be it should be in either your text or email. I can't remember exactly what it was. Okay, yeah, let me pull it up here. Oh, yeah, that looks awesome, Buck. Well, if you got clearance on that, I'm just getting off the, uh, the highway so I can start making my way towards the interstate, and if that's the case, I'll just have them... Uh, Daryl, when he picks up the combine, to send it right over to the wrap shop and we'll have that addressed and be ready to go for harvest. You have a good one, bud, and we'll be in touch. All right. See you, Buck. Now, welcome back, everybody. I would like to give you an, a great little update on where we are at statistically, financially, and metaphorically. Metaphorically, I'm completely screwed up. Statistically, we're down in the hole. And financially, we're doing really well. We're just coming from field 10. We had some problems with the weather not being on our side. We had a couple days with some really just nasty, like, sleetish snow. I couldn't get in the field. I couldn't get anything out. Everything was just mucky, so we had to let things dry out, which it's been about 50 degrees right now. It's, it's kind of cooling off. We got a cold front. We're trying to beat the snow this afternoon. But we're shifting priorities to field 39, which we already have the 8430. The 8345R is taking a break. I just want to put it away for the servicing season and get it ready for anhydrous. I am currently filling up the fuel trailer at the farm, and everyone else is still at the field getting ready to move. The combine is basically out of diesel, so I got to get that to the combine before we can take it anywhere. And this trailer is going to need at least 200 gallons of fuel in it if I want to be able to do anything right. Daryl's truck, though, has not skipped a beat when towing this trailer at full capacity. Not too worried about it. And I'll give you guys a little bit of a financial breakdown when we're driving the semi down to the south field. We'll see you guys there in uh, probably a couple minutes. This, this thing takes a bit to fill up. If there's anything that never stays the same, it's plans. Those plans being I was, now, I'm, now I'm driving the combine. Nonetheless, we're en route to field 39 with the conga line behind us. Financially, so I can explain what has been going on, we have just under $140,000. We got our $250,000 insurance for the S680, which has finally now been completely taken care of. All that money has now been reallocated to the bank payment for the down payment on the S780 that Daryl is currently going to pick up. And to round it all out, I did actually sell my 240 Airflex Honeybee. I was able to get 70 grand for it. It was a brand new header. It was it was purchased last season. It didn't do me really any wrong. The only wrong that it did was it didn't flex. I need stuff to flex around a lot of these contours that are going in the fields. This field's fine. It'd be just fine in that. It's the fields that's up by just south of the tile ground and some of these bigger like over the top mountain hills. With all of our readjustments and everything taken into consideration, I think now this operation is at the literal top physical peak condition that it can absolutely be. We'll see you guys down at field 39, cut ourselves a little bit of the headland pass, and hopefully by that time, Daryl should be back with the S780. I think you guys are gonna love it. This combine has been 
this whole deal has just been a huge making in the works and I can't thank Prairie State enough for helping us out. And we are cutting. This is the start of the incline, so this is gonna be a little bit of runoff. That orange doesn't really surprise me and I believe this is also a shift in the soil types. I'm gonna work the headland pass, hand it off to Kevin, let him run back in the combine and live to cut another day. Checking back in, the headlands have been cut. Kevin is rolling strong. I just got word on the radio from old Corey. I should probably head down to the field entrance. There's a little surprise sitting there waiting for me. Kevin just unload on the go for this. I'm gonna run down there and check. I think the 780's here. Sounds good, good buddy. We'll see you in a bit. Guys, I can't even tell you how ecstatic I am right now, how long I've been waiting to have this. This will help harvest literally tenfold. Kevin's giving me the ring. Here we go. Let's just, ooh. I see something green down there. I hereby present to you guys the 2022 John Deere S780 Prairie State Tractor Edition. Let's give them boys over in Illinois a round of applause. Ex I did. Oh, you do not know how badly I've wanted this thing now. I do need to calibrate some of my monitors though, because I did end up investing in a Gen 4 monitor up for the top right hand corner, in addition to the one that is already connected to my control panel. This is Agrotono's flex head draper, meaning, yes, it does actually flex. This is why I was saying this is going to be better than the honeybee, because I'll be able to get into all those really weird crevices, unlike the opposite. We'll try this out on our own. And I don't, I'm gonna trust Daryl. I don't want Corey in this thing yet. This is too new. This is too much just for him. Holy cow, you have no idea how much better this is. 112 bushel beans, holy cow. That is over the top fantastic. Usually where I'm at, you're lucky if you can get even 50. So far, this thing looks like it's cutting beautifully. I'll run, let me check out back behind the combine. <laughs> Stand corrected. Give it a second. Oh, yeah. Not even a single P. Well, maybe one or two in a square foot, but that's about it. I will take those results. I'm going to hop back in the tractor. We'll get the drone up in the air. And boy, oh boy, are we about to get some of the best drone shots you've ever seen. We are going to be cooking now. pretty well the only reason we haven't really finished the fields yet is because i keep flying around and getting the drone shots otherwise these two combines would have been running non-stop and i'd been dumping trucks and getting things figured out i have a feeling though when agrotono did the coding for that header i think he left the the ai like how far apart their paths go he left it at the 45 footer instead of a 40. i i'll come back and get it but I have to pretty much go back and fix that issue. And we couldn't have asked for a better combine driver. So Daryl, you keep doing you. You keep being the best combine operator we got out here. And just like that, we're off to the races. I'm gonna keep working on these beans. I'll probably finish this bean field out and we'll catch you guys back when we shift over to corn. I'm really trying to knock out as much of this crop as possible. And if anything, finish the harvest in this episode. I'm gonna get on to that project. So we'll see you guys 
in probably a couple hours. And with Kevin in the S780, that is the last pass of beans. We just did the rest of the cleanup. We're gonna get the headers disconnected, throw these things on, get them ready for corn real fast. I, I'm gonna be harvesting a majority of the way through the night. I don't want to have to do, I literally want to have to do as little corn as possible, finish out field 11, which is the farthest field, and we will end the harvest at home. The home front, I don't mind doing somewhat in the wet or snow. It's, we can cut it, we can dry it ourselves. It's just, I want to be on the home front before this storm hits that's coming in that you guys can see in the top right. It's getting dark out, and we still got quite a ways to go. So we're gonna get this stuff traded off, and we'll see you guys when we start cutting a little bit of corn. One eternity later. Well, it took an absurdly longer amount of time to get ready before this than I thought it would. But Kevin and I are gonna start rolling just for a bit tonight to try and maybe knock out at least. When I pop into my main PDA, I wanna at least take out this chunk of what was the unburned but unfinished pass and then maybe try and chop this little edge. So all we have to do is this little square. This is a 37 acre plot. We've probably already done about seven of that. So we got 30 acres here and 50 acres here. The night's not getting any younger and neither am I. I'm gonna head south. Kevin's gonna probably start towards the north side and we'll work our way around. Golly, this is hard to see in here. There should be our rows, yep. I know. We're gonna see how well this thing picks though. We have it set up, or it should be ideal. This stuff is saying that it is 136 bushel corn. That is awful. But it also is because it's starting to snow. I for one know that what I'm doing is probably not a great idea. It's, it's farm sim. The stupid thing about farm sim is that the second it says it starts raining, the game instantly acts like, oh, the corn's gonna be so majorly wet that it needs to deduct to your yield. If the amount of snow that's been coming down right now were to actually fall on this, it wouldn't change the corn one iota. But it says it's pulling in 136 bushel corn. I'm just literally gonna finish out this pass, which is to my right. Kevin's probably gonna have to start on the opposite side. We'll just kind of go back and forth and play a game of chicken to see who gets it first. Otherwise, I'm not gonna run into any of that stuff tonight. I don't wanna lose any more corn than I have to trying to shoot stuff out the back with it just being soaked. Well, good morning, everybody. We had just what I thought it was gonna be, a quick little flurry, nothing that actually stuck. Corey and Daryl are currently in the Silverado with the fuel trailer. We took that home with us last night and not topped it off, but put about 250 gallons of diesel in it. And Kevin is riding with me. The plan for today is I have all four semis. We brought every single one of them that I own with a trailer out to the field. Both combines are going to run. I'm going to have Kevin and Corey be running the combines. Daryl and I are going to be running the truck system. We're going to try and keep all of these trailers, like filling them, taking them back to the farm, dumping, coming back. We don't want these two combines to stop running at all. I feel we'll be able to keep this operation rolling. It's just going to be a matter of staying on schedule and not letting pretty much just we cannot turn the combines off. Corey's going to run the STS. Kevin's going to run the S series. He's just riding with me in the buddy seat at the moment. I'm going to kind of cut, like I mentioned last night, if I can get this to zoom out, I'm going to chop off this bottom portion of the field, basically making it a square, which will then keep Daryl and I busy while these guys are just running straight back and forth passes till they meet in the middle. Now this southern portion with the way I have my passes set up on the yield monitor, I'm 99.9% .9 sure this should lead me directly. Holy cow, this actually might work. But we'll get it all figured out. I just want to get a system down so we can just keep clicking and nothing stops. I actually like being the grain card operator. We did decide that we're just going to leave that portion for the last, just so we can get this system rolling. I want to be done with this field no later than 9.30 on the clock. In real time, I want to be done by 10, but in the in-game clock, it'll be about 9.30 if I were to do it, because it's at halftime. In a little bit, I will be taking out the drone, and we'll catch a couple more shots, but dang, do I like that Prairie State wrap on that thing. Looks fresh. Kevin's called me on the radio, said the yield monitor reads we're pulling in 181 on that combine. Corey has said his stuff is pulling 170 in the STS. 
Not that bad of a loss compared to what I thought it would be. That STS technically could go in for service, but Corey is getting fuller by the second, and I, I already could tell I'm not going to be able to keep up with this. This is pretty good corn, and I'm not even running 200 plus. <laughs> Crazy nights, I figure I should probably give it a try. Baby, check it out, see what it's all about. But the traffic was fast and the money was slow. The people I met, you never get to know. I kind of miss this place I used to live back home. Cause up here it's pregnant. keep them rolling at all times pretty much not even once did they not stop at least twice well i'd say this has been a success so far what i believe i'm gonna do is i'll finish off this field kevin's gonna come back one more time i'll tell Corey to shut it off at the end of this run since i believe kevin can catch this all in one swipe but as for field 15 which will be our very last field the home field around the farm I think I'll save that for one last live stream with you guys just so we can end it out on a high note but that is going to do it for this video guys thank you all so much for checking this one out I have to get Daryl stopped quick enough before he starts his next run yeah I think literally he could Kevin's gonna catch that all in one perfect pass I however gonna unload the STS call it a day and I'll finish up the rest of this after breakfast we're gonna run into town quick Grab some grub since we did not do that. We just got here right ASAP and just started working. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. If you liked Prairie State as well as all the Nebraska series content that you have seen today, be sure to check out both their playlists in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. But that is going to do it for me, guys. Be sure to check out the Boomstick Club for all the up to date content from me and the gang. You already know who is in it. I shall see you all in the next one. This is the rental, man. Out.